The set pieces aren't as good as it could be but there's little things we can do to maximize them as those stats should let's have a look today we'll try and make the best of a bad job with the set piece creator we can still do things that will make it that bit better for you as we saw with Scrinia. a little reminder my man Scrinia just scored 33 times in 52 matches for the season. And he isn't pinging him in from 40 yards, I can tell you that. And we start with attacking corners and you great with this. Now look, there is no exact science to corners in Football Manager, but it's all about giving yourself the best possible chance to get goals. Now you can see the blank template from both the right hand side and the left hand side, pretty basic stuff. So big lads in the middle and just whipping it in. But we're going to make it so the defence have more to think about. And that's the key thing, occupying the defenders. So first of all, you want to get your best attackers of the ball involved in the box. Now, most of the time, that's going to be your centre-back. So let's get them in there. And probably a striker if you've got a big lad up front. You saw the stats of my centre-back and he was placed at this side at the near post. So there he goes. So obviously, I'm going to ask my taker to nail the near post. And this is the key thing, by the way. I want my near post corners to be an outswinger into there so it goes away from the keeper if he comes for it. I know most people do in-swingers, but screen here. So bear in mind, your opposition, the defence, might set up something like this. So they're going to pack the box. So what we need to do in attack is drag some of them away. So the first thing I like to do is bring someone in short. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring this guy in short. So that means they're going to have to have a defender in and around that area there. So then I'm going to set up my main attacking threats in the box here. Now, I want someone lurking at the far post. A striker is always a good option. That position there is good because if this guy has too much on it or the keeper saves it, he's there to pop it in. And to confuse the keeper a little bit more, it's always good to have someone marking the keeper so he's got a little bit less room to attack the ball. I also want someone round the back as well. So this guy can be around here attacking the far post again for the same reason. If it's flicked on, he's there to finish it off. So I've got a five strong attack in there and I've got a couple lurking on the outside, again dragging defenders towards them because they're going to need to be marked. If you look at my defence here, the setup from the generic setup, they're going to have a bit of space there because I'm not marking anyone. So this area here should drag people out, leaving space for these guys. That's it, it's as simple as that. I leave two back, it's usually the full back, something like that, and that's the near post one. Now the far post routine... Different to previous FMs where I used to just go both sides, near post, near post. Now I like to rotate and chuck in a far post as well to keep the AI guessing a little bit. Same gig though, we've got to aim for our best headers of the ball. So I'm going to send him over to the far post and I'm going to ask my taker to hit that far post. And I want an outswinger again. Away from the keeper, going towards that man. Again, I'm going to want someone lurking at the near post for that cut back across. And I want somebody else marking the keeper for the same reasons as prior. And someone on the far post as well. And not forgetting, we're going to bring in that short option as well to drag a defender out. For this one, I'm going to add in a further distraction by bringing one of the players to the near post. So they're loading the near post, so hopefully they think we're going to go near post. We're going to go the opposite and hit the far post. We're going to have the two outside again, so they're going to need marked. That's the setup for routine two. And don't forget, you can add two routines in here like that so then you're going to rotate between the two a great little option keep them guessing so don't just stick on the near post get the far post involved as well it's got a good chunk from there as well as you'll see in a few clips next cheeky throw-ins they are cheeky right throw-ins are a cheeky one and one you can get some good results from the default is pretty basic like you can see there but the one i like to do is a combination First thing I want you to do is select the type of throw you're going to do, and I really like using quick. Long throw used to be elite, but it's kind of calmed down over recent FMs, so I like to go for a quick throw. Upon selecting the quick throw, you can see three arrows appear, which means this guy, the thrower, is going to select the best option as fast as he can take it. For this reason, we want the guys coming in short, but we do want the best crosser of your ball in the team to be as close to him as possible. 
Now what I like to do is stick the opposite fullback on, in this case to Marco. If he receives the ball, he's then free to deliver an in-swinging cross fast. Now if he does this, I'm going to send my centre back up to the far post. A great little tool, he's the best header in your team. Now my left back's got someone to aim at. Same gig with the corner taking, I'm going to have someone mark on the keeper to distract him. And again, someone on the near post, so they have to keep an eye on these two guys, hopefully freeing him up. Alongside the three coming short, we've got a guy lurking on the area, so they don't know who to pick up out of these four guys. Now, if you're feeling brave and you only want to leave one back, that's cracking as well, because I'd put him up there close to the far centre back, so he's going to have to be marked again, hopefully giving room to this fella. How about the toughest one? Free kicks. You can still get success for them. Use the corner taking kind of philosophy as well. So when it comes to free kicks, they're a bit of a tougher nut to crack, but I use the same philosophies as I do for corners. A far post free kick, aim for the best header of the ball, and we'll also have players dotted around on the opposite side to try and distract the opposition defenders, along with a couple sitting on the edge of the box. Another alternative is a short free kick, so this fella's going to hit it short, and that's why I bring in my opposite fullback as well, so he can get it, receive it, and ping it in, hopefully catching the defence off guard. It's a tougher nut to crack in the corner, but it can be worthwhile if you take a bit of time on each one. And don't forget, just like corners, if you create more than one routine, they will rotate through them as the game goes on. At the end of the day, success from corners will be greatly increased the more pressure you can give the opposition and the more corners you get. For example, this game against Verona, we won 5-0, we absolutely murdered them and we had 15 corners, which meant Skrinia scored two. Here you see it coming in, there's the outswinger to the near post, Skrinia popping it in. And on this one you can see the guy marking the keeper, causing him all sorts of problems. All of these factors contribute to that ridiculous stat there. And this incredible stat from a centre-back. 33 goals in 52 matches. I mean, that is just ridiculous, right? This entire set-piece routine will be available to download in the TMS Discord. My channel members, you've already got it. So there you go, crew. They're all set up for you, but please do tweak, tweak, tweak. Make your own, but try some of them philosophies. Let me know how you go, and can you beat 33 goals from a centre-back with no penalties?